Let's get ready. This is the Awake Nation News, and we begin with today's headlines. Penny? Our first headline is the WHO director says independent media must be wiped out before disease X arrives. What a nice guy. <laughs> um, the FBI director says China cyber attacks on U.S. infrastructure now at unprecedented scale. We have a, a TikTok video on that as well. Christopher Way warns that pre-positioned malware could be triggered to disrupt critical systems in the U.S. And we've been telling you that. We've been bringing you um, different directors, power uh, down, grid up. Director David Tice has been on the show. So, you know, if you have an opportunity, please go see that video. This is not if, it's when, and it's not scuttlebutt. Um, and then this is going to be the video. The FBI warns us nationwide shutdown coming, China cyber attack. And uh, didn't someone that you know send this to you? My daughter, who works for the largest utility company in the state of Michigan, and who happens to be a liberal, but who is also a, a conspiracy theorist and believes a lot of the things we do, she just doesn't align with us as a conservative. She's kind of a moderate to a liberal person. But she's the okay. one that sent this. And so she, she said, Dad, this is something you have to talk about on the show. They're thinking it's going to be sure. pretty soon. Yes. And then in other news, and this was actually uh, an individual that we've had on the show, Trevor Fitzgibbon, has written an article on this in, in Intelligentsia. But WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange's extradition hearing begins. It begins today. Assange himself was not in court for the last ditch attempt to prevent his extradition to the U.S. We have a little video on that as well, saying that Julian is essentially uh, ill and they are killing him by his incarceration. Tucker Carlson, uh, days ago on Navalny and assassinations leadership requires killing people. Days before Alexei Navalny's death, the former Fox News host was pressed about why he didn't ask the authoritarian about free speech. He says, you know, if you're a leader of a country, unfortunately, you're going to have to kill people. Alexei Navalny, the Kremlin's most ardent critic, dies, but we have video on that, that there was a top Navalny aide asked uh, alleged British spy for millions in funding, and this was his top man. So, you know, when, when we're thinking, hey, who might have killed this guy? Well, might it have been, the, you know, the CIA? Yeah, or the Brits, because uh, that's who he was talking to. In other news, the U.S. House is losing three Republican committee chairs to retirement in the span of a week. And additionally, I had read, I believe it was between 24 and 29 GOP leaders are retiring. They are just sick of the atmosphere within um, the houses. And House Republican announces retirement a day after Mayorkas impeachment. Um, and this is where Tennessee Rep. Mark Green said the United States and his Congress were both broken beyond most means of repair. David? All right. Well, the World Health Organization Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus has ordered governments to eliminate independent media before the imminent arrival of disease X. Now, Tedros told the World Government Summit that he predicted a deadly pandemic in 2018, two years before the outbreak of COVID. Before did, he pick, did he predict it or was he, he told it was coming? He Or was he part of the plan right. to make it happen, right? Okay. Uh, that's the first thing that, that hits my mind. Uh, anyway, before warning the world was ill prepared for the next one. He said, a history teaches us that the next pandemic is a matter of when, not if. It may be caused by an influenza virus or a new coronavirus or a new pathogen we don't even know about yet, what we call disease X. Modernity News reports, disease X is a deadly pathogen that will apparently be 20 times deadlier than COVID. The only way to prepare for the outbreak is by giving the World Health Organization oh. allegedly more power. 
Right. In the form of a global health treaty, which will right. unify a common approach to combating it, according to Tedros. You know what that means? Giving yeah. them the power to shut down countries. The United yes. States is getting ready to sign off on this idea. I think Biden may have already done so. Oh my God. Um, he then made clear that the biggest stumbling block to the treaty's passage was conspiracy theorists <laughs> claiming it was a who power grab. Which it is. He said that it's a power grab by the World Health Organization, that it will cede sovereignty to who, that it will give who power to impose lockdowns or vaccine mandates on countries, that it's an attack on freedom, that who will not allow people to travel and that who wants to control people's lives, he said. And then he said, oh, wait a minute, that's exactly what we want to do. No, right? <laughs> wait, that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, he said, these are some of the lies that are being spread. If they weren't so dangerous, these lies would be funny. But they put the health of the world's people at risk, and that is no laughing matter, Tedro said. The WHO head then claimed that the organization has no role in imposing lockdowns or COVID restrictions on the population, despite governments that did the <laughs> WHO's advice in doing exactly that. Who he are said, you, WHO? He said, let me be clear. It sounds like Nixon let me make this clear. Right, let me be clear. Uh, WHO did not impose anything on anyone during the COVID-19 pandemic. Not lockdowns, not mask mandates, not vaccine mandates, claimed Tedros. Last month, the WHO met with representatives from pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca. Ask if this is <laughs> right for you. Ask your doctor, right? To prepare for the mystery disease, noting that the hypothetical unknown threat that will require the mass deployment of new vaccines. Last year, the BBC reported that the UK government had already opened a research facility to prepare for the outbreak of disease X. Critics have remarked that the new illness may roll around just in time <laughs> to <laughs> fill the 2024 presidential election. Of course. And, you know, they're standing there singing, money, 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 money. That's right. That's right. And That's the right. FBI warns us nationwide shutdown coming China cyber attack. This is just part one. It's one minute and 40 seconds. Some pretty incredible breaking news coming out in the last 24 hours. Happening now across the United States could be a nationwide shutdown. And this is going to be unfolding due to cyber attacks against infrastructure systems in the U.S. coming from China. Now, we've been receiving these warnings from the FBI for several months that Chinese hackers had infiltrated infrastructure systems in the U.S. We had heard that there was about 24 of them. Then we received new updates that there are actually more, and they're saying significantly more. And also they're saying that they actually compromised these over the course of the last five years, some even longer, and they did not know. And now we're finding out, and they're saying it is at unprecedented scales, the likes of which we did not realize. Now, take a look at the headlines and all of these coming out in the last 24 hours as the FBI warns yesterday, Sunday, February the 18th, of what's going to be coming. Take a look at this. FBI Director Ray says China cyber attacks on U.S. infrastructures now at unprecedented scale. They're saying there is more than they realize. And this is essentially plans to shut down the entire nation and wreak havoc. Christopher Ray warns that the prepositioned malware could be triggered to disrupt critical systems in the United States. FBI Director warns China's computer attacks are now at a scale greater than we'd seen before as vulnerable critical infrastructure remains at high risk to be targeted. FBI warns Chinese malware could threaten critical U.S. infrastructure. Agency Director Christopher Wray says Beijing hacking operations have reached a fever pitch and FBI says China's cyber attacks on U.S. infrastructure are reaching new levels. And again, all of these coming out in the last 24 hours. Now, I'm going to be sharing with you the latest details, and I know this is not what we want to hear, but I believe that knowledge is power, and us knowing what's going on is half of the battle. So make preparations for you and your family. Okay, so now I also think that this has something to do with the death of Mitch McConnell's sister-in-law, who uh, is involved with China, and then another death that uh, we're investigating at this time, is an individual who uh, killed himself two days after uh, his sister-in-law uh, died in a pond in a Tesla on a ranch. Um, and uh, two days after that, an individual jumped from the Galleria. And I believe that this individual also uh, knew our governor, knew some very high people, was a philanthropist, just like uh, Mitch McConnell's sister-in-law. 
and it all has to do with China. FBI director says China's cyber attacks on U.S. infrastructure are now on a present scale. Here's the article. As intelligence chiefs and policymakers gather for this city's annual security conference focused on the wars in Ukraine and the Middle East, the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation urged them not to lose sight of another threat, China. Christopher Wei on Sunday said Beijing's efforts to covertly plant offensive malware inside U.S. critical infrastructure networks is now at a scale greater than we'd seen before, an issue he has deemed a defining national security threat. Citing Volt Typhoon, the name given to the Chinese hacking network that was revealed last year to be lying dormant inside U.S. critical infrastructure, Wei said Beijing-backed actors were put were pre-positioning malware that could be triggered at any moment to disrupt U.S. critical infrastructure. And I'm also going to add that this has to do with the influx of the CCP that are coming across our borders. It is the tip of the iceberg. It is one of the many such efforts by the Chinese, he said, on the sidelines of the security conference that has been dominated by questions over Ukraine and the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. China, he had earlier told delegates, is increasingly inserting offensive weapons within our critical infrastructure poised to attack whenever Beijing decides the time is right. And I'm also going to say, is this a forerunner that they're putting out there for war? The FBI chief declined to elaborate on what other critical infrastructure had been targeted, stressing that the Bureau had a lot of work underway. Ray's comments are the latest in a string of public warnings by senior Biden administration officials to animate their fears about China's advanced and well-resourced hacking prowess. Western intelligence officials say its scale and sophistication has accelerated over the past decade. Officials have grown particularly alarmed at Beijing's interest in infiltrating the U.S. critical infrastructure networks, planting malware inside U.S. computer systems responsible for everything from safe drinking water to aviation traffic so it could detonate at a moment's notice damaging cyber attacks during a conflict. And uh, there have been many movies, Bill uh, uh, Willis, not Bill Willis, but um, Bruce Willis, uh, Bruce Willis did a movie in which they talked about, it was a Die Hard, in which they talked about a fire sale. This is what they're talking about. David? Absolutely. Well, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange's extradition hearing begins, but Assange himself was not in court for the, uh, for the uh, last-ditch attempt to prevent extradition to the United States. He's being prosecuted for ordinary journalistic practice, his barrister said. As the latest legal battle to avoid Assange's extradition to America began, the WikiLeaks founder was described as being too unwell to attend the start of the two day hearing that drew a crowd of supporters at the Royal Courts of Justice in central London. Assange 52 is wanted in the United States on 17 charges of espionage and one charge of computer hacking following the publication of leaked documents and diplomatic cables in 2010 and 2011 relating to the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. He has been in Belmarsh Jail in southeast London since April 2019, following his expulsion from the Ecuadorian embassy, where he lived as a fugitive for seven years to avoid extradition to Sweden on sex assault charges, which he denied. Edward Fitzgerald KC, representing Assange, told the court, quote, he's being prosecuted for engaging in the ordinary journalistic practice of obtaining and publishing classified information, information that is both true and obvious and important public interest. Fitzgerald said there was a real risk that Assange would suffer flagrant denial of justice. A key part of Assange's case is the extradition treaty between the UK and the US which does not apply if the alleged wrongdoing is political. It's an abuse of process to seek extradition for a political offense, Fitzgerald said. He added that since Assange's original extradition hearing in 2021, there had been active U.S. political interference with any domestic judge who sought to investigate or prosecute those matters Mr. Assange helped to expose. Now, we have uh, a gentleman that's going to close our show. His name is Jason Shepard. He works with Trevor Fitzgerald at the Intelligentsia, and uh, he will probably be expounding a little bit about, upon this Assange uh, case. If you uh, have any questions or want to read further articles, go to the Intelligentsia 
and uh, Trevor sent me the article that he wrote last night. He is PR for Assange and for Snowden and Chelsea uh, Chelsea Manning. And this is one minute. Giannis Avarofakis speaks regarding uh, Assange's torture and confinement. I visited Julian the other day at Belmarsh Prison for the second time, Britain's Guantanamo. He spends 23 hours every day for three and a half years in solitary confinement. This is an attempt not to break him, but to kill him. It's slow murder of a man who has not been convicted, has not been charged of anything except journalism. I find it astonishing that there were people on the left who turned against Julian, newspapers like Guardian, who played a role in his incarceration and vilification. Julian is holding on. Julian is not well. Julian's soul has been diminished by solitary. It feels, he told me, as if his personhood has been shrunk down to a tiny kernel. And his hope is that if our campaign for him to become free again succeeds, that he can grow his personality again from that kernel. This is our duty. If you care for your right to know what your governments do behind your back, in your name, all those crimes against humanity being perpetrated, not only in battlefields and invasions of foreign lands, but also against our environment, the secret deals with fossil fuel companies, then you must support Julian Assange, because Julian Assange is dying for your right to know what your government is doing on your behalf behind your back. The mainstream media are part of the cloud capital that is usurping your mind, my mind, our mind. In this struggle for humanity's future, the independent media are an essential ally for the future of journalism, for the future of the news, for the future of information and opinion. Please join Double Down News on Patreon. I have to concur with pretty much everything that he said. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, the alternative media is the news now, David. Yeah. And this is a political persecution. Tucker Carlson, days ago on Navalny and assassinations, leadership requires killing people. Days before Alexei Navalny's death, the former Fox News host was pressed about why he didn't ask the authoritarian about free speech. All right, here we go. Alexei Navalny, the Russian opposition leader and fierce critic of Vladimir Putin, died Friday while imprisoned in Russia. Navalny's death comes as the American conservative movement has proven has grown sympathetic uh, toward Putin, an autocrat whose political enemies have a long history of dying under mysterious circumstances. Former Fox News host Tucker Carlson is at the forefront of the rights adulation of the Russian president. And just days before Navalny's death, he defended the nation's alleged political assassinations. Carlson did so while speaking with Egyptian journalist Imad el-Din Adib at the World Government Summit in Dubai on Monday, a week after he interviewed Putin in Moscow. Adib questioned why Carlson hadn't pressed the Russian president on freedom of speech in Russia and why he did not talk about Navalny, about assassinations, and about restrictions in, on opposition in the coming elections. Carlson responded that he has spent his life talking to people who run countries uh, in various countries and has concluded the following, that every leader, every leader kills people, including my leader, he said. Every leader kills people and some kill more than others. Leadership requires killing people. Sorry, that's why I wouldn't want to be a leader. Press restriction is universal in the United States. I know because I've lived it, he continued. So at a certain point, it's like people can decide whether they think what countries they think are better what systems they think are better. I just want to know what he thinks. That is the whole point. The answer was stunning at the time, but Navalny's death just days later cast an even more sinister pall over the assertion. So basically, Tucker Carlson is saying, sometimes as a leader, that's what you've got to do, but is just being opposed to the government uh, and insulting uh, you, the, the current head of state a reason to be put to death? I don't know. Right. Is, is Carlson backing that? It sounds like he is. I and I normally I'm you know with Tucker on a lot of stuff, but if, if that's what he really meant, I don't know if I agree with that. I'm not sure what he meant. Um, 
In in this case with Alexei Navalny, um, he was a fierce anti-corruption campaigner. This is how they're uh, depicting him. But he he literally was going to try to take over Russia, who galvanized yeah. the country's political opposition and has died in prison. Russian news agencies reported this last Friday. The cause of his death still being established, said prison authorities. They cited by Russian news agency TASS. Navalny had been serving sentences in a penal colony amounting to more than 30 years on various charges. He was 47 years old. Um, ahead of a presidential election next month in which Putin is widely expected to win a fifth term. Navalny's death eliminates the last real political opposition that still remained inside Russia following Putin's invasion of Ukraine, his crackdown on freedom of speech, and the passage of increasingly draconian laws aimed at stamping out any dissent. And I will say that the United States does it, it does appear that it's doing the same thing. It's yeah. cracking down on freedom of speech. The death also solidifies Putin's position following the two disastrous years of war that have killed hundreds of thousands, led to Russia's isolation from the West and impoverished the Russian economy. And Tucker was there. The Russian economy is not impoverished. And it says Putin has crushed any remaining dissent. So we only have three more minutes, but I want to play this. This is the top Navalny aide asked for uh, asked a British spy for millions in funding. And this was the intelligence video that was released. It's uh, one minute. So it's hard to, it's hard to hear. He's saying if somebody would spend 10 to million dollars a year supporting this, he's actually talking uh, about fundraising That's why it has subtitles because it is difficult to hear. So they're recording him and he's basically uh, saying that, uh, and, and his name is Asherkov. He was residing in the UK having left Russia in 2014. He's wanted on allegations of committing fraud to finance Navalny's 2013 campaign for the office of the mayor of Moscow. He's one of the witnesses invited by the British Parliament for its 2018 inquiry into alleged corruption in Russia. So I'm gonna, we'll be pursuing this a little bit more. I just wanted to tag that uh, and have people please research that. Very good. And that is about all the time we have for news right now. Uh, if you are watching this on our news channel on YouTube, which is at the Awake Nation News, we invite you to please head on over to Rumble, and our Rumble channel is the David Zublick channel, where you can watch the full three hours of the Awake Nation, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time.